Hello everyone and welcome back to my review channel. Today I got another movie review, horror movie, month of October. Um, today I'm doing the movie Dark Floors, uh, the Lordy motion picture. Uh, this is a, what was, what is this, a Ghost House Underground, Ghost House Underground. Um, rated R, horror violence, disturbing images. Um, this, like I said, the Lordy, this is called Dark Floors. Uh, this is the Lordy motion picture. Basically, there's this band called Lordy. You can see L-O-R-D-I. More of a hard rock, heavy metal, uh, kind of a sound to them, but it's a band. They're a band, and they, they're in this movie. The, since they all wear costumes, if you want to say that, um, masks, very horror, horror guy, horror disguises, they're all in this movie. So if you like the band, I don't see why you wouldn't have this movie. I mean, that's pretty much, it was basically the guy, the lead singer, Mr. Lordy, like him and the director's idea, or like his idea, with the director's help, or whatever. So it's basically chem comes about from the lead singer anyway. And so you want to make uh, this horror movie. They all like horror. All the band members they like horror. So not let's not confuse this band with any type of satanic band. They've been considered or called satanics, or their band satanic, but they're not. Uh, they're just they just look evil. It's pretty cool. I thought even I thought they were, could have been sa uh, satanic. I had to look it up myself to figure it out. Uh, I mean, if you just go through, not if you just don't even listen to the music, if you just go look at that, what they look like, you would probably think they're satanic too. It's just all evil looking costumes and stuff. Anyways, let's get to this movie. Uh, this movie, Dark Floors. Um, International Movie Database gave this a 4.6. Rotten Tomatoes, not rated, of course. No surprise there. But 25, 21, not, no, not 25, 21 percent of the audience like this. Um, what does it say? Don't get off on the wrong floor. Like that. The cast, uh, let's just say Mr. Lordy is pretty much the lead singer. Kita is, um, shoot. The drummer? Uh, Amen, who's, a uh, shoot. Guitarist, aux, bassist, awa, keyboardist. A couple of these guys are not even in the band anymore. That's why I think it's funny. Like, uh, let me see, who's not in the band? Awa is not in the band. And I think Kita left as well, the drummer. So, the drummer, they got a new drummer. It's really funny when I was reading these guys, reading up on these guys on Wikipedia and everything, or just reading about information of these guys. Uh, it's funny because... I guess if Keith is a drummer, if I'm right, if Keith is a drummer, he quit. They replaced him with another guy who died like a year and a half, two years later. And now they have another drummer. Just They just call him the drummer. Yeah, I probably just call him the drummer too. Um, let's just get this started. I want to get this done as quickly as possible. Um, there's a few guys in here that has been in many other movies. William Hope, Ronald Pickup. Noah Huntley, Dominique McElligot, uh, McElligot. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, that guy, Noah Huntley, who plays, like, the father of this autistic child in this movie, uh, he's a main, he's, like, pretty much the main character, the main hero, and, uh, he's a British actor, but he, his British accent is not in this movie, but it, she, I, it is in this movie. He plays, I, I'm trying to collect my words here. He's a British actor, but when he acted, he acted in an American accent, pretty much. So he sounded American. But every so often, you would hear a strong, thick, British, almost Australian, I dare say, accent come out. It would every so often. Just every so often, you would just perturb me to hear that accent. I'm like, okay, you obviously can't, like, just stop being, trying to be an American, like, just American accent, just give me a British accent. If it's this hard for you to do, just give me a straight up British accent. I don't care. I don't care that much. Just stop trying to, if the, just stop going in between both of them. That's bad acting. Um, alright. So, uh, starts off. They're in a hospital. Uh, this autistic child is, uh, what best can be described as an autistic child. 
uh, is getting a CAT scan when she's not even asleep or not even uh, tra tranquilized or nothing. She's just fully awake in a CAT scan. Um, the si but the CAT scan goes, something goes wrong and blows up. Not like a literal, like, boom or nothing, but, you know, it breaks. Uh, the father decides to take the child, his, take his child, autistic child, to uh, another, somewhere else, basically. And he gets on an elevator to do this. Right before they talk to the hallway, she keeps asking for a red crayon. Um, she just keeps wanting this red crayon to draw with. Uh, right before they get on the elevator, she's approached by this bum called Ben, who's also a patient in this hospital. But no one notices and no one decides to stop like this random bum dude to talk to his autistic daughter. Daughter. I will say one thing right now through this whole movie. I just don't want to say this. I probably will say it again. Throughout this whole movie, um, this father is completely oblivious to what his daughter is doing and or where his daughter is at. Everything that happens, like he tries to act like, or they, the director tries to play him off as a doting father, caring, doting father, but... Every time, like, this movie's based around this little girl, and she always gets, like, lo they always lose her, and it's just so annoying. It's just like, dude, you're not, like, how good of a father really are you? If you're just constantly, constantly losing your daughter in a wheelchair. I mean, he turns around, and he lets just, like, random-ass bums talk to her, when no one says anything. He just lets, ran he just, he leaves her with, like, random dudes... Uh, when he knows she's in debt, it's just it's dumb. It's completely dumb. I don't want to... This is a bad movie. I mean, this isn't a bad movie, but it's a B movie. So I knew it was going to be bad. But I just don't like parts like this in my bad movies. I, I like bad movies. I just don't like when it's like certain aspects are this bad. It's just to think a little harder, do something a little bit different so you're not constantly looking like you're an asshole who doesn't look for his autistic child. That's what perturbs me about this. That's probably one thing that perturbs me about this whole movie. It's just the fact that he is constantly losing her. And he can do nothing. He, he can do nothing. Um, anyways, I'm getting so sidetracked here. Uh, so they get in the elevator. Finally, after the little hallway shot, they get in the elevator with uh, a few other people. So, the father and daughter, autistic daughter... Uh, the nurse who tries to stop him, a officer, uh, just a police like guard officer who has a gun, um, a random guy holding teddy bears. He just has a few teddy bears. He's a random guy holding teddy bears. I guess for some other patient he might know or something. And the bum. So that makes one, two, three, uh, one two, cop teddy bear six six people. Okay, six. And uh, they're all in the hospital. And they go down. They go down a couple floors. And they, something strange happens where they get stuck between 6 and 7. And then you hear, like, a voice in the background say, uh, not 6, not 7, not hell, not heaven. I'm pretty sure that was Mr. Lordy himself, a lyric from some line. Um, they get off on level 6. Finally, like it was pretty cool for a moment where it showed like the numbers it kept switching from six and seven, six and seven, six and seven, six, and seven, six like it didn't know where it was at. Pretty cool part. Uh, but they, it finally works and it goes down to six and the door is open. The door is open to nothing. No one's there, completely empty and in disarray, you could say, just almost dilapidated. Um, a stupid part. Can't you see? Um, basically, the, when strange things start to happen, the bum looks at Sarah, is her name. The autistic child is named Sarah. The Ben, the bum, uh, looks at her and says, Can't you see? Can't you see? Meaning, like, can't you see them? I swear, this is another part where, like, no one's asking why this guy's talking to this autistic child. And the father just doesn't say or see anything, even though they're all in one group, but he can't hear this dude or the sense that he's talking to her. And it's like, he's a father is completely oblivious to everything. Um, 
The, another thing, nurse picks up x-ray photos around the hall, like they're walking through the hall trying to figure out what's going on. There's like x-ray photos uh, scattered on the ground. She picks them up and she starts flipping them like a flip book. She's like, D -d 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 you know, it's like, you know, flip books are used and it'll show like a character running and jumping off a clip or something. Yeah, she flips the photos like a flip book. Like you just automatically would think about doing that with x-ray photos. But anyways, it shows like an open mouth or something. Very creepy. But it was just silly to say, I'm going to gather these photos up and I'm, gonna start, I'm just going to flip book it. It was just silly to see that. Uh... Finds open door to staircase. Uh, they go. They try to leave. Go downstairs because they don't want to go to the elevator. They think it could be like a fire alarm or something. So they take the stairs. Uh, they don't go too far when they hear something at the very bottom, and the officer gets grazed by a shot. A gunshot grazes them, <coughs> and they go back inside. This is probably the fifth floor they're at now. Um, they just keep going down floor by floor. That's why it's called dark floors. Because they just, each, they only go down like level by level. They find like another staircase somewhere and they go down like one more level. Um, a silly, another silly part here, he uses a crutch. Uh, one of the types of crutches that, I don't even think the crutch, the fact that he uses a crutch doesn't even matter, but he uses a crutch to block a doorway. The door is one of those ones where you flip like this. Let me see. It starts at an angle, and then you just flip it like that. And if anybody knows those types of doors, they don't work both sides. Like when you pull one side down, it doesn't. The other side doesn't go down too. So just the aspect of him using a crutch to try to hope, thankfully, or try to think to block this doorway is just silly. Because he could just open the door the other way, because it wouldn't turn the doorknob on the other side of the door. It wouldn't. So I think that was just very, very. Again, you don't. It was just. Director doesn't think of it or whatever. They don't think about it, and they if they spend a little more time. They would have thought about it. Um, again, by now you pretty much get to see how oblivious the damn father is when it comes to his child. Uh, where is she at? Where she goes? It's like, have you seen Sarah? Where did she go? She's in a wheelchair. For God's sakes, man! Stop being oblivious. Um, electronics start repeating itself. Uh, basically, a radio just repeats itself, a TV repeats itself, yada, yada, yada. And that's when the first monster uh, comes out from, like, a window, uh, one of the window frames of, like, a doorway. And it happens to be the keyboardist, Awa, is the first one. She is called the Scream Queen. It's, like, the only monster to reference itself as a monster. Um... Basically, it's a screaming ghost lady who just, like, follows him down the hall screaming. Again, this is a funny part because she's able to scream blasting out windows on these guys. But they only blast out right by when they've already passed. They pass the window, then the windows blast out. I'm just like, dude, you're not much of a scream queen if you can't even get to these guys. If you want to hurt them, scream so loud you get to the glass in front of them. But she only screams loud enough where it just, like... It blows apart the glass when they already went by it. I just think that's really silly. You're trying to frighten these guys, and you suck. Again, if they thought a little harder, they would have solved this. Um, let me see. They get to this room. The guys get to this room. Uh, accidentally turn on the machines, which is like the x-ray machine, the lights and stuff. And that's when the ghost, the Scream Queen, fades away. So she fades away. Um, while in there, the random guy, the teddy bear guy, decides to, uh, try and leave, since he believes it's just part of a imagination or something that everyone sees, and that's what he try. that's what the cop tries to explain, like, yeah, it's imagination, and we imagine the same imagination we all saw, yeah, right, but he tries to re leave, the rest of them stay inside, uh, he gets to the elevator, uh, and he's about to... The doors are about to close the elevator when he decides he doesn't want to do this. He's getting too freaked out, and he holds the elevator open a little bit, screaming for help. This brings back the cop and the father, trying to help him out. Uh, lights are starting to go off, leading to the elevator. Um, something is there, knocks itself, a monster knocks itself through the bottom of the elevator. While they're trying to get this guy out, knocks him out for a, for a moment, but it turns out to be... Uh, the drummer Kita, the drummer Kita, uh, he pops up from the bottom of the elevator, 
Not the shaft, just the elevator itself. From that elevator shaft, he pops up from the bottom. And nothing happens to him. Uh, did the guy get yet? They, they're they able to take him out quickly enough. Take the random guy out. Teddy bear guy. And um, that's when Kida from underneath the elevator grabs him and bites his leg. So it was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Uh, bites his leg. But then knocks him off and Kida just falls down. When you expect the monster falls down to the bottom. Okay, so now, group fi tries to find another staircase, and they get to another floor down. Now, they're on the third floor. They get attacked by another monster. This time, his, this time it's Ox, the bassist. Um, he comes crashing through a wall. Uh, Ox chases them down. Uh, he runs right past the... Bum, Ben, he, he walks right past Ben and chases down the other guys. Uh, the cop stops, try firing at him, and that's the way he was a, and that way Ox was able to get to the cop and kill him quick enough. So he pretty, the cop pretty much saved everybody else. So now this leaves the father, daughter, um, father, daughter, nurse, and the teddy bear guy. But Ben, we don't know what happened to Ben the Bum. So, but anyways, father, this is the dumbest thing. So they get, they're following, they get in this hallway, they follow this hallway, get to another room. They look outside the window, which is they could actually see outside now. And they notice that the raindrops have just stopped. Like nothing outside is moving. So they kind of believe time has stopped at this moment. And they don't know what's going on. Um... So what do they do? He does something very stupid and leaves his daughter with the guy who basically has been talking shit about his daughter for a while now. And he's like, hey, they want your daughter. You can stop this. Yada, yada, yada. This guy's obviously against keeping her. But So what does the father do? He leaves his autistic daughter with this random guy who no one knows who's been talking shit about her, his daughter this for a while. Again, very dumb thing. I just wanted to scream in my top of the lungs how they could have got, how they get away with writing this junk. Um, I just don't know what to say about that. Anyways, he leaves it with them to go downstairs, finds a, um, let me see, wait, wait, wait. Bre yeah, yeah, yeah. To go downstairs, to break through this wall that's stopping them from going any further. Um, the nurse makes a call to another floor, and then she realizes it's actually a call, she's actually talking to herself from a call she made earlier, uh, in this, earlier in the night. Again, so it's very weird stuff going on. Um, while down at the bottom, breaking through the wall, they hear something from up top, the father and the nurse, the father. With the father, which who found a gun along the way of the hallway on another like dead officer, he fires up the top of the staircase and uh, realizes that a bunch of teddy bears fall, stuffed teddy bears, and he realizes that he's the guy that actually shot the officer earlier when I when earlier in the movie when they were looking down from above and something shot up and grazed the officer. That was actually him. Now he realizes that was actually him. Again, time frame here. Uh, if time stopped, time's also repeating itself. Um, now, uh, let me see. Father, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here we go, here we go. Guy, so now the guy, random guy, is left with Sarah while they try to go downstairs and break through the wall. Random guy, teddy bear guy, takes Sarah in a wheelchair, big surprise here, and tries to take her through a hallway to give her away. To give her up. To, to take her to the monsters. Um. Bum. That's, this is when the bum show, shows back up and surprises the guy. Tries to like tussle with him for a minute saying, hey, you can't, it's, you have no right to give her away. Uh. They have, this dude had a walkie talkie on him and while the father and the nurse is down there breaking through the wall, they, they were able to get through. And find a 
what could best be described as two human bodies just like holding each other, but like completely made out of sand. Um, they hear the walkie-talkie go off in like a scuffle, so they reject back upstairs to find the guy um, in a sandstorm with Sarah and the random guy in a sandstorm, and out pops the next monster, uh, the guitarist, Amen. Uh, basically, he's like a mummy dude. He shows up, walks by Sarah, the monster, walks right by Sarah, grabs the guy, grabs the random teddy bear guy by the throat, and rips out his heart. Pretty cool gore star right here. Uh, Fowler grabs a gurney on wheels, tosses it to the Amen, and shoves him through a window. Like a door window. Nurse finds the bum. Ben says it's like he's been dead for a week, and they leave him. Uh, this leaves father and daughter and nurse, Emily, which I now, first time I've like heard her name throughout this movie. I probably just wasn't paying attention, but I swear it's like the first time they've called her Emily. Um, father, daughter, Sarah is her name, and Emily, the nurse. Uh, they leave to find one way blocked by bodies down a hallway. They lose Sarah again. God, can this guy cannot just like watch his daughter at all. It's been like four or five times. Um, they split up to find her, both with walkie-talkies now. Trying to find his daughter. Uh, Nurse Emily gets in one room and must hide from a monster, Kida, who's starting to uh, grab... It was like, they're in the morgue. That's the fastest way they could have went. And uh, that's where they went to to get away from like what they were seeing or hearing. And Kida... Like, she's in the morgue, and she sees Kida the monster come to this one of the bodies on the gurney and starts eating organs out of this one body. It's pretty cool. Um, but she sneaks up behind him with, like, paddles, one of those electrocution paddles that starts, like, heart palpitations from, like, heart attacks and stuff, and, like, uh, smears his head with it, so he, like, electrocutes his face, knocks him back as she runs out. Um... Shocks the face and runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father finds Sarah. Father is able to find Sarah. And gets attacked by Amen. Bum, who's still alive. Ben the Bum, who's still alive. Shoves IV stand through Amen. You know, one of those big ass IV stands. Shoves it right through him. Amen turns around, grabs the Bum by the shoulders, and brings him in. Shoving the IV, IV stand through the Bum as well. They go down, they both go down to their knees and like still holding each other. Basically that was the scene from earlier where they're two bodies together in a, in like sand. Um, father with daughter and nurse, uh, get on elevator with the ox running from other end of the hallway to get there, but they get away. Obviously they get away. So, uh, ox was it, you get another shot of like the, uh, Ox guy running after him real quick. Um, shoot, this is getting taken really too long. Elevator doesn't stop. Uh, elevator doesn't stop at floor one. Okay, number skip zero two. Okay, that's what I'm also should say. It doesn't stop on the first floor, which they were trying to get. There's no ground floor and no zero ground zero. There's no ground zero floor and there's no zero floor which is ground zero. It basically skips that and goes straight to negative one. It's, yeah, it says that too on the number system. It's like, this negative one. Um, get the floor negative one. They get off floor negative one. And Nurse gets attacked by a screen queen, Awa, uh, slicing her leg. It's hard for her to walk now, so she gets on the wheelchair carrying uh, the autistic child on the wheelchair. So they're both in the wheelchair. One look from Sarah, the autistic child, and Scream Queen fades away. Now the nurse in the wheelchair holding Sarah. They set down a hallway uh, with bodies. Bodies start to reanimate like zombies, and they run after them. But uh, door closes. They try to get away, but the door closes uh, between the father and daughter and um, the nurse. Basically... The, the nurse couldn't get away, and she gets grabbed up by all the zombies and bodies. Uh, zombies get her. 
now the father and daughter are alone. Now they're just themselves. They flee in an ambulance, which is, looks like broken, broken down as hell. Uh, black slime starts to follow them. What well, could best be described as black slime follows uh, follows them to try to envelop them. Father stops in front stops in front of like a big pool of black slime, slowly forming into a person. And this is the finally the main lead singer of the band Lordy, Mister Lordy. And in this movie, he is called just Lordy. <laughs> nah. I don't think any of these monsters had a name. It was just like, I'm just calling them their band names. None of these monsters had a name. Except for Mr. Lordy. And his name is Lordy. That's what they call him. Again, where's the creativity? Um, they called, wait, no, no I'm sorry. They called Awa the Scream, Scream Queen, but that's it. Um, so now Lordy is there. He, he has, like, big bat wings. Uh, and now, like, he try the uh, father tries to flee off in the ambulance again, uh, fleeing from the monster. Drive he drives away and decides to take Sarah out of the car to confront Lordy himself. Because this sounds like it. you know what? Screw it. He hasn't been smart this whole movie. Might as well. Let's just do it. Let's just go with it. The guy's been dumb. Been a dumbass this whole movie. Let's just take the daughter out. Leave his daughter by himself. By herself. And just leave her alone. Hopefully he'll take care of the monsters himself. Because he's been doing such a good job of it so far. Um, leaves her. Father drives away. Finds Lori. Tries to run him down in the ambulance. But is stopped uh, by Sarah shining like a light. Uh, she's just there. Uh, all of a sudden it's just like she's just there in his way. So he gets out of the ambulance, is like wondering what's going on, Sarah, is that you? The slime takes over him and kills the father real quick. But Sarah's still there, shining like a light. Uh, yeah, so the slime envelops him and kills him. Sarah, now talking to Lordy, plainly now. It's like Sarah, who all of a sudden just talks, starts talking plainly, out of nowhere. Like, she, like none of, she was never autistic, this never happened. Like, it's cool. Like, she's plainly talking to Lori, like, no problem. She says, that's it, no more. Lori screams. Yeah. She says, uh, but you don't understand. Light can't live in the darkness, in darkness. Lori screams again. Sarah, no, you're not going to do that. She says. Uh, then it, then it shows, uh, no sound, somber music, no sound, uh, shows shots of hospital slowly fading from old and dilapidated back to brand new and how you remember seeing it uh, beginning the movie. Shows clips of Sarah back in the CAT scan room, uh, just like clips of her, the father, and the doctors. Uh, so sh shows them outside in the hallway being talked to. And this when you see um, what you get to hear what the bum says. When he comes up and talks to her. And he says, Sarah, I don't feel cold anymore. Um, in the beginning of the film, you don't hear what he says. And she starts freaking out terribly, terribly bad. And then when it gets to this point and he says, Sarah, I don't feel cold anymore. It's like it's a good thing. Like, hey, I don't, I don't feel cold anymore. Thank you. Again, she does the same thing as last time. Starts freaking out. I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? What is going on with you where you freak out? And not only this, the only big difference between these two, the beginning and now, is that in the beginning she wanted a red crayon. Now she has a blue crayon. Like it's supposed to mean something that she has a blue crayon. I don't know if this is just a mistake. I doubt if it's, I doubt it's a mistake. It's, it's obviously supposed to mean something. I don't know, though. I don't know what the hell it means. That's just into that, that. This movie was a bad movie. If you like Lordy, it was a good movie. Just let's, let's just leave it at that. Um, if you like the bad, I don't know why you wouldn't really appreciate or like to own this movie. But I should say, I don't want to say this is like, this isn't a terrible movie. It's a bad movie, but it's not a terrible movie. It's a B movie. Um, but I can hands down say, out of all these other movies I've watched, this is better than like most of the other 
Canadian-made films that I've been watching lately, I'd pick this movie over over a few of those any day. Absentia, or like, hell God, no, I don't even know, man. A lot of those movies I just picked. I'd watch this again before I'd watch any of those again. Not bad, just not too good. Um, if you like Lordy, watch it. You, you'd be entertained. It wasn't a bad horror film. Um, just a couple of gore scenes, not, and when it was, it wasn't really that great of gore. It was okay gore, it wasn't that great. Script really could have been worked on. Um, the guy's accent really could have got worked on, and acting. But again, you don't really look at B-movies for their acting credits and stuff, so. But there you go. Sorry this, sorry this took so long. I cannot believe it. I, I guess there's just so much to say. There really was. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for your time. I will see you guys again very soon for the next horror film. Next horror movie I'll be doing this, uh, this month. So, thank you guys for your time. Thank you for watching. Everybody have a great day. Bye.